In today's video, I'm going to share with you a travel guide to London, England, which is where I went this past summer and I absolutely loved it. Hey guys, my name's Natalie, and if you're new here, I make videos all about leveling up your life through travel experiences, mindful eating, and nurturing healthy relationships. In today's video, I would love to welcome you to London, a city where tradition and the modern flair coexist in a perfect harmony. In 2023, the capital of the United Kingdom continues to captivate visitors with its rich history, diverse culture and vibrant energy. Whether you're a first time traveler or a seasoned traveler, this detailed travel guide will help you make the most of your London experience. So in this video, I will teach you all about London. We'll get into how to get to London, accommodations and where to stay. We'll talk about transportation within the city and how to get around. We'll talk about the must visit attractions and of course where to eat. And we'll talk about the cultural etiquette within London. And finally, we'll end with safety tips. Okay. A couple of housekeeping items before we actually jump into the video i'm introducing a new video format that includes chapter timelines in the caption down below this will allow you to easily navigate to the specific parts of the video that interests you most i will also include all the videos that i mentioned in this video in the description box down below so you can go ahead and watch those after this video if that's something you want to do so let's jump right into the guide <music> Let's talk about how to get to London. The first option is to fly into London. London is served by several international airports, including the Heathrow Airport, Gatwick, Stansted, and Luton, okay? Each airport is well connected to the city center by trains, buses, and taxis, all right? I personally flew into the Heathrow Airport, and it's a huge airport, okay? There's multiple terminals. There's five different terminals, and terminals two, three, four, and five each cater to a specific airline and specific region. Another thing is within that airport, there are multiple transport links, okay? Including the Heathrow Express train service, the Piccadilly line on the London Underground, and a comprehensive network of buses and coaches. So when I arrived into London, I actually just took a bus or a train straight into the city and it was super easy. The tube is really easy to figure out. I know a lot of people can get very overwhelmed with the process of taking the tube, but don't get intimidated. It's really easy to buy those tickets and then go right into the city, okay? Another way to get to London is by train, okay? So Eurostar is a very popular train service. It's a high-speed train that connects London with many major European cities like Paris and Brussels. And so if you're arriving from within the UK, the efficient train network, including services like the Heathrow Express, makes travel incredibly convenient by train. I actually created a video of me traveling into London. It's called How to Get from Paris to London by Train. I I went on Eurostar, it was an amazing experience. And so I actually take you from the whole thing from buying the tickets to actually arriving in London. So if you are doing the same trip yourself, you can kind of see what those train system looks like, you know, using Eurostar. <music> All right, let's get into accommodations. London offers a diverse range of accommodation options, and that's anything from luxury hotels to more budget-friendly hostels or even Airbnbs. Some of the best hotels that you can stay at when you're in London include the Ritz Carlton. The Ritz is an iconic luxury hotel. I'm sure you know the name, and it's it's known for its elegance and impeccable service. I stayed at a Ritz hotel in Chicago, and it was phenomenal, five out of five stars really good experience okay but the one in london it's located in a upscale mayfair district and it offers opulent rooms and suites as well as michelin star dining and a stunning afternoon tea experience which is a must when you're going to london right the Ritz is synonymous with luxury and has been a symbol of London's high society for over a century. I'll give you two other hotel options that you might wanna check out if you're looking for something more glamorous. The Savory, which is situated on the banks of the River Thames. The Savory is a historic hotel that combines a classic glamor with modern luxury. And this one's also known for its exceptional service. So this hotel boasts beautifully appointed rooms, service renowned restaurants, and the famous American bar, all right? So the Savory's central location makes it a convenient spot for exploring London's landmarks as well as grabbing a quick bite to eat outside of the hotel or just walking around and exploring London. And then the final hotel that I will recommend is called the Shangri-La Hotel at the Shard. This one's also very amazing. For a contemporary and breathtaking experience, this hotel definitely stands out. This hotel occupies floors 34 to 52 of London's iconic Shard skyscraper. This hotel offers panoramic views of the city because you're so high up, okay? The luxurious rooms and suites are complimented by an infinity pool, which 
Come on, that's amazing. A Michelin star dining at Ting and an atmosphere of sophistication. It's a top choice for those seeking a modern and sky high escape with an unparalleled experience. But if you're looking for a more budget friendly option, then I would highly recommend looking at Airbnbs within London. I personally stayed at a Airbnb and it was really cheap. I think it was less than $100 a night. And I had a I had a decent experience. I had a really big kitchen, so I was happy with that. But I mostly wanted to spend more money on the dining experience and just exploring London. That was just my personal opinion. But if you do go with Airbnb, book things in advance so you can score those good places for a great price that you can lock in. So if you're wondering where to stay within London, like which hotel, or, or maybe you want to do an Airbnb, some of the popular locations to stay include Kennington, the Covet Garden, Shoreditch, and South Bank. Definitely book those accommodations well in advance. During those peak travel times, tickets are gonna like soar, okay? And you don't need me to tell you that, but just a reminder. <music> Let's talk about transportation within the city. So you have a couple of different options. Public transportation in London is incredibly efficient. The London Underground train, locals call it the tube, which I mentioned earlier, is a great option. They also have buses, trams, and the DLR, which is Docklands Light Railway. All these options make it incredibly easy to navigate the city. The tube is also super cheap and inexpensive, and you might want to consider getting an Oyster card, which will make your traveling much more convenient, and you'll get a little bit of a discount whenever you travel as well. It's really easy to buy the Oyster card. You can get it on your phone or you can get it at one of the machines near the tube. Just follow the signs and jump on the right tube. Since I lived in Chicago for like six or seven years, I took public transportation, the L we called it, which is just the same like subway situation. And I'm used to taking the train and just figuring out where to go. It was really easy for me to figure out the tube, but if you need help, I would just recommend going onto Google Maps and then following the directions so clearly and carefully then you won't get lost. It's color coordinated and it tells you like which side of the train to go on so you know exactly where to go, how to get there, and you'll be confident that you aren't lost okay another option for transportation is walking or riding your bike many of london's attractions are within walking distance of each other so it's really easy to just put on your walking shoes and walk all around london additionally the city has a growing network of cycling lanes and bike sharing programs so if you're into riding a bike maybe you just came from amsterdam and you're like i need to get on my bike again and ride around the city then this would be a great option for you i personally didn't do that but there are a ton of parks that riding bikes in would be so much fun and so relaxing Finally, another option is taxis or ride sharing. Black cabs are readily available all around London and ride sharing services like Uber operate throughout the city as well. I ordered an Uber, it came super fast. Just remember they do drive on the opposite side of the street and the driver is also on the right side of the car. That was something like I was kind of blown away with when I did get into my Uber, but just remember that's how it works in London. <music> Now we are going to talk about the must visit attractions. Okay, so a couple of historical landmarks that you definitely need to check out include the Tower of London. You definitely need to explore this historic fortress and marvel at the crown jewels. The reason why this historic landmark is famous is because it was built as a secure fortress and a symbol of royal power. Behind the castle's walls were storehouses for weapons and the royal mint produced the nation's coin. Another place you absolutely need to check out is the Buckingham Palace, which is, I mean, if you go to London, you need to see that. Witness the changing of the guard ceremony and the official residence of the Queen. So it's totally free just to walk up to the Buckingham Palace and look at the beautiful building and just kind of like soak in all the history. However, if you want to go inside and get a tour, it's 32 pounds for buying your tickets in advance. But if you buy the tickets on the same day, they're 35 pounds. So just a little bit more expensive if you buy it the same day. Those are the prices when I went in the summertime. So obviously those could fluctuate, but just giving you a reference point. Some cultural hotspots to check out include the British Museum. Immerse yourself in world history and art with a vast collection of artifacts. This museum is absolutely free. All you all you have to do is maybe leave a donation if you want to. It's optional. Um, otherwise, it's really easy to just reserve your spots online and then you can just go right into the museum during your time slot. Another museum that is absolutely free is called the Victoria and Albert Museum. Really beautiful artwork inside. I think you might really like that one as well. That one's on the way to many parks, so it's an easy one to just hit on the way. Finally is Tate Modern and National Gallery, which you can delight in masterpieces renowned by really famous artists, okay? Tate Modern stands out as a premier modern 
Modern Art Gallery in London, which showcases the nation's extensive collection of modern art spanning from the 1900s to present day. With an impressive 5.7 annual visitors every single year, they proudly rank among the world's top 10 most visited museums and galleries in the world. So the collection boasts masterpieces representing both international and British modern art. Let's talk about a couple of parks and recreational spaces that you can go check out, walk around, and enjoy the nature of London. The first one that you absolutely need to check out is Hyde Park. So here you can enjoy a leisurely stroll and paddle on the Serpentine or relax in this extensive green space. So within Hyde Park is the Kennington Garden, which is an expansive park containing the Kensington Palace and the Diana and the Princess of Wales Memorial Playground. This space covers over 5,000 acres of historical parkland and the park provides beautiful green spaces right in the heart of the capital where you can escape the hustle and bustle of the city and just enjoy nature. I actually walked through this park for a couple of hours give or take and I really enjoyed it. It was nice just to relax and kind of look at the pond and just people watch but also just enjoy nature and just get lost in the beautiful plants all around. Another park to go and check out is called Regent's Park which is where you can go and visit London's zoo and explore Queen Mary's Garden. This park is very close to the Rose Garden and the Japanese Garden. So if you love walking around and seeing beautiful roses, then that is the park for you. Let's talk about the culinary delights in London. First up, for all my foodies out there, I definitely recommend going to Burroughs Market, which is where all food lovers indulge in paradise, okay? This place has a diverse culinary offering. It's like one of those spots where there's multiple different restaurants and cafes all in one little place, okay? This market is close to the London Bridge and it's been there for many years. It's one of the best known produce and street food markets around. Burroughs Market is open six days a week and the market's atmospheric halls and passageways are a pleasure to just walk around and explore and pick up a quick bite to eat. Burroughs Market consists of three main areas and I'll throw up a picture of those areas here. So you can see the first one is called the Three Crown Square, which is where all the larger producers and merchants stand then you have the green market which is where small and specialist produce traders stand and then finally the borough market kitchen which is where you'll find all that street food traders so surrounding the market you'll find a complimentary blend of restaurants bars and shops so it's really just a great place to be if you love food and you want to just get all the fresh and most delicious food that london has to offer in one place when it comes to fish and chips you definitely need to go and check out a traditional pub fish and chips taste great with beer i wouldn't no, I don't like beer, but that's what everyone says, right? So experience a classic British fair and a pint at historic pubs. Some of the best ones include the Churchill Arms, and I'll throw up the address here. Um, it's known for its distinctive exterior adorned with an abundance of flowers, okay? The Churchill Arm in Kennington is a beloved pub with a rich history. The interior is equally captivating as well, and it features Churchill's memorable and cozy atmosphere. Renowned for its Thai cuisine and extensive drink selection, it seamlessly blends traditional English pub vibes with an international flair. And then another great pub to check out is Ye Olde Cheshire Cheese. This historic pub dates back to 1538 and has welcomed the great Charles Dickens and Mark Twain inside of their restaurant, which is pretty cool. Its low ceilings, wooden beams, and cozy nooks contributes to its timeless appeal. This place is really good though if you want to go to a good pub. <laughs> All right, let's get into the entertainment. When you are in London, you definitely want to go check out a world-class musical or play in London's most famous theater. These would all be categorized as the West End shows. Some of those shows include The Lion King, Hamilton, Les M, and The Phantom of the Opera. And finally, Wicked. You can't forget that one. Then finally, you can also take a day trip from London. Some popular day trips include the Windsor Castle. All right, so you can take a short train ride to explore this stunning royal residence. You can also take a day trip to Greenwich and visit the Royal Observatory and stand on the Prime Meridian, which is another cool experience. <laughs> Okay, next up is where to eat in London, all right? So I did create an entirely other video where I show all of my favorite places to eat within London and some of the most popular places within London. So if you wanna watch that food guide, I will link that down below. Just for a quick high level, I did visit 
uh, deliciously Ella's restaurant called Plants. And this is a plant-based healthy restaurant and it's focused around a plant-based menu, okay? The dishes are crafted to showcase the richness of natural flavors and ingredients. Honestly, I loved the food. It was exceptional. I got the maple glazed cauliflower on a mint pesto base. I was blown away by the flavors and my mouth was salivating like crazy. However, the service was a complete disappointment and it almost destroyed and ruined the entire experience for me. They forgot about my order and they literally just had me sitting in the restaurant for like 40 minutes. So it felt like a waste of time and that was frustrating for me. However, I'm not going to let that discount the restaurant itself because the food was incredible. So go check it out for yourself, but just be aware the dining experience might be hell. I'll give you one other amazing food place to go to that is extremely popular. It's called Dishoom and it's Peruvian food, okay? The address is located right here. And this place is super popular because of their ceviche. So the menu at this spot features fresh and flavorful dishes with a focus on ceviche, which is a traditional Peruvian dish made with raw fish cured in citrus juice and a ton of other vegetables as well. The vibrant atmosphere and diverse menu make it, make it a favorite for those seeking a taste of Peru within London. Again, if you want to watch my full food guide video, I will link that down below, okay? All right, you guys, now we're going to jump into the cultural etiquette within London, okay? So this is something that you can either figure out on your trip or just be prepared for it before you even go so you don't do anything stupid, all right? So when it comes to tipping in restaurants, it's customary to leave a tip of around 10 to 15% when you are dining at a restaurant within London. You should definitely leave a tip if the service charge is not included on your receipt. So check your receipt, see if they've added it for you, and if they haven't, go ahead and add that tip of 10 to 15% on top of your total bill. The next thing to consider is the idea of queuing within London, all right? So Brits definitely take queuing seriously. So just be patient and wait your turn when it comes to lines, all right? That's all I'll say. And then finally, let's talk about greetings, all right? It's a common thought to believe that Brits can be very rude. <laughs> But just remember that if you are visiting London, you're visiting another country in someone else's home. So just try to be polite, okay? A simple please and thank you will definitely go a long way in the eyes of the British culture. Now let's jump into the safety tips of traveling to London. In terms of emergency services, the emergency number in the UK is 999 for police, fire, or medical emergencies. So definitely keep that handy. If something crazy does happen to you, at least you'll have the number and know who to call and get help right away. In terms of public awareness, definitely try to stay alert in crowded areas and be cautious with your personal belongings. Obviously, you don't want to get pickpocketed if you're walking through a huge crowd of people or have anything stolen from you, okay? So if you want to avoid pickpocketing, I did create a whole video where I share with you my best tips about how to not get pickpocketed when you travel to London or any other country within Europe, okay? So I'll leave that in the description box below. And then my last tip is health insurance. So if you're traveling to London and it is not your home country, I definitely recommend ensuring that you have travel insurance or health insurance that covers all medical expenses. This way, if something crazy does happen to you, you will be covered and won't be out of pocket a ton of money and your health will be taken care of. London, with its timeless charm and modern allure, promises an unforgettable experience, especially in 2023 and beyond, okay? So from historical landmarks to cultural treasures and culinary delights, the city has something for every traveler. So pack your bags and get ready to embark on a journey through the heart of the United Kingdom. Cheers to an incredible adventure in London. If you guys enjoyed this London travel guide, I think you would definitely love my London travel vlog, and I'll link that in the description box down below. It's my my experience walking through London for the first time ever. And if you want to see another travel guide for any country within Europe, let me know. I traveled to Europe this summer and saw over 15 countries, so I'm happy to make a travel guide for any of those countries that I went to, okay? All right, you guys, I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.